We need to get to a position where when I ask that question, 100% of the people in this hall answer, yeah, I can explain the solution to the problem. We are going to explain the solution to the problem this afternoon, and we are going to ask you gentlemen and ladies to go away with the task to perform for us to actually build the momentum. Things are happening very quickly now. We live in very interesting times, don't we? All over the world, people are not rioting, but they're protesting. They've had enough, they're fed up, they're tired and they're angry and they're frustrated. Now they go on these marches, and I have a great deal of admiration for their time and their effort. They're doing a good job because they're helping to wake people up. But there's two groups who are not there at those marches. There's Middle England, and Middle Scotland and Middle Wales, of course, who have nice cars, they have nice homes, they've got their mortgages, they've got families, they're busy. So they've not been fully exposed to the problems, and our job is to actually get the message to them. At the moment, they're quite comfortable, because they don't see what's coming down. And it's going to be too late when they do wake up unless we get them awake early. So when we have these protesters going to marches in London and New York and around the world, the Middle Englands of those countries are not there, but there's another group that aren't there. It's the elites aren't there. They have their representation there. That's the people in the black uniforms and the shields and the batons and the, and the taser guns. They're the people protecting them, and they never turn up. Their issue, of course, is that they have built their fortress, and they hide behind their fortress, and they have got their private militia who stop us getting at their fortress. But ladies and gentlemen, the issue is this. We do not need to penetrate their, their fortress. What we are going to do is we're going to build our own fortress, around their fortress and we're going to lock them in because the solution to the problem is to create our own systems our own systems that we control and stop using the systems that they control that is the solution but that's for this afternoon and we're going to explain that to you this afternoon all right so um what i've decided to do is to step back a bit and recap let's actually look at our situation let's ask the question why are we here today what is the purpose of being here what sort of riled us why are we angry why are we frustrated identify the problem and then as I say this afternoon we'll work through the solutions we're in lawful rebellion or we're proposing lawful rebellion because we have a right to govern ourselves and we are being governed by a foreign power in Europe. We have not been asked, we have been told. That breaches our constitution and it's against the law. We have a right to go into lawful rebellion when our leaders do not listen to what we say. Now what happens when we approach our leaders? They don't listen to us, they won't speak to us, and they don't see what we're trying to explain to them. So what are our grievances? I've just got a list here. It's not conclusive. It's just a small sample of the issues that we're dealing with. Here are some unco very uncomfortable truths. The United Kingdom has been split up into regions. We have the European Union now, which is implementing its control of our lives through regions. Scotland is virtually broken up now with the 2001 um, Allodial Act for Scotland. The land is no longer under the crown. So Scotland, for all intents and purposes, is an independent country. The same is being um, it proposed for regards of Wales and Northern Ireland that these will operate as, as separate and independent regions. So 
The United Kingdom has virtually been dismantled now. The Queen is redundant. Call her dethroned, whatever you, we believe she's accepted mediatization. She no longer protects our constitution and, and we effectively are defenseless against the criminals who have actually transformed, tran, trans, sent our constitution to, to Europe for their control. The betrayal is in Parliament. It is our parliamentarians who have betrayed us. It is our parliamentarians who are controlled and it is our parliamentarians who have transferred our national sovereignty to a foreign power. Our system of justice is in ruins. We no longer have common law courts in this country. Common law courts are what protects us from tyranny. The education system has been an exercise in social engineering and our children have reading abilities, maths abilities, far below what they used to be. And I don't care, all of these students are coming out with A stars, they're not a scratch on the education that they used to be. I know because I've seen somebody in a retail shop add seven and seven on a computer or on a calculator. Entertainment, or what goes is that entertainment is in fact propaganda. Our children are being brainwashed. Other examples, our once powerful navy has been decimated. It's a joke. Our air defense depleted and grounded. Our armed forces fighting terrorists? I don't think so. It's strange, isn't it, that the poppy fields in Afghanistan are booming away. There's been a massive increase in the production of drugs since our supposed uh, NATO powers took control there. And of course, we all know with Iraq what, what the story is. It's about oil, isn't it? The Bank of England forecast more doom and gloom. Gordon Brown said no more boom and bust. Right? There was no more boom, I think he meant. It was all going to be doom, gloom and bust. Our political leaders are untrustworthy. Who in this room believes what the politicians say? Not a single hand. That's absolutely disgraceful that we cannot trust the people who are supposed to be looking after our affairs. They are liars. This man is responsible with his good friend Bush for the deaths of over a million innocent people. He is a criminal. We will see this man in jail. They are thieves. These were the three that were put in prison. There was another 650 that should have been with them. They are incompetent. John Major signed the Maastricht Treaty and committed us to the Stability Pact, which is why we are responsible for billions and billions of taxpayers' money to bail out a sinking ship. The euro will not survive. They will keep it going as long as they possibly can, but it can't survive. One system does not fit all. Gordon Brown sold our gold for an absolute pittance. If you're sitting on a mountain of gold and you want to get the best price for it, what you don't do is look at your graph and when it's at the bottom, sell and you certainly don't make an announcement to the world. This man was the worst chancellor this country has ever had by a long chore. They are traitors. How unheard. I think Margaret Thatcher worked out what was going on. She's not perfect, but I think she had some right ideas 
I think the wrong ideas was she was closing down our workplace, our manufacturing. I think she made a massive mistake there. But on the issue of Europe, she was right. These two people instigated, if you like, a rebellion against her. They stabbed her in the back because these people are traitors, they're Europhiles. This is the biggest traitor of them all. He signed the European Communities Act and sold Britain down the river. He was responsible for decimating the fishing industry. Our fishermen, the Scottish fishermen, and, it, and this, this applies across the board. The fishermen around the country lost their jobs on the back of Edward Heath, the traitor. But that's not all he did. He actually handed over lock, stock and barrel our whole fishing revenue, which was worth three billion pounds a year. How generous. What did he get in return? Absolutely nothing. Our farmers are in despair, our small farmers who used to feed us. We, they can no longer feed us totally. Driven to bankruptcy and to suicides. Our shipbuilding. We used to have a, 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 a very substantial shipbuilding industry. Why did we surrender it to the foreign competition? We had the biggest merchant fleet in the world. And about the time of the European Act, we had a fleet of over 30,000 tons. It's not, it's actually millions. So we had a massive fleet and it's depleted since then. It is starting to recover, but it should never have been depleted in the first place. The moral decline, I'm not a prude. I believe we should have a good t time. But what has happened to pride and dignity? Where are the reasonable limits? They seem to have lost the balance between having a good time and behaving in such a disgraceful way that I wouldn't want to be a father of any of these children. There is no respect. This is a young man peeing on, on a, a memorial. I don't care if he's drunk, even drunk, you do not do something as despicable as that. And he shouldn't be drunk in the street, should he? Drug taking is being glamorized by celebrities. I don't care if you take drugs in your own home, but don't put these people on a pedestal and glamorize it, because that's where the youth are getting the wrong ideas from. This is being promoted. We've also got a new normality that's being pushed in our face. Again, I don't have any problems with people's behavior or, or their, their particular leanings, but behind closed doors. I don't ex expect my, my wife and I to be in the middle of the town hall or, or the main street kissing and cuddling. Where's, where's the discretion? Where's the courtesy to other people? Crudity and bad taste, a new acceptable humor. This is just last week in Jonathan Ross's, this, this, take, this man takes things to depths. It's David Williamson, who on national television exposed his rear end, an invitation to Jonathan Ross on national television. That is a disgrace. But people are finding it very funny these days. And then, on the 17th of October, in the Daily Mail, I read this. You would not believe it. 50,000 parents are given 100 pound vouchers to learn how to raise a child and in an attempt to halt the moral decline. It's in their faces. They are doing it. What are they talking about? You wouldn't read about it, would you? This is sex education for five-year-olds. This is what our schools are teaching our children. The decision has been taken away from parents. The state is now dictating how our children will be educated. And the state is deciding that we are gonna start teaching our children as young as five about masturbation, about orgasms, about erections, about prostitution, 
about homosexuality and about how their parents are having sex at five years of age. What's wrong with Lego? Immigration. England is now one of the most crowdest countries in Europe and probably around the world it's one of the most crowded as well. No government for the last several decades has made any attempt to control immigration. And fundamentally, that's wrong. There's nothing wrong with immigration. There's everything wrong with uncontrolled immigration. Because we are a crowded nation, but also our infrastructure is not right. We don't have sufficient money in going into our schools, our hospitals, and our housing. This is bad management. The congestion is out of control. We're not building motorways, we're closing them down. And as I said, if we're going to have a controlled immigration, we would also have a, a proper policy with regards to the infrastructure. How often have we seen this on our way to work? It's appalling. Chaos. The net result of all this chaos, the overcrowding, and the bad management is that we, the long-suffering taxpayer, pay more and get less. Bad management. And then there are these. Not a subject that everyone talks about. I'm a master mariner by profession. That's ship's captain, if those of are not familiar with that. My job was to load the ship, calculate the stability, discharge the vessel, and navigate ships from A to B, and also the, the meteorology. My job was to go onto the, the bridge, on the wing of the bridge, and look at the clouds, and determine what clouds, alt, alt, you know, the altostratus, cirrostratus, lenticular, I can't even remember the names of all of them, but I, I remember what I've, I've seen. And in all my years on the bridge of a ship, I've never seen anything like that. And they've tested them. And there's barium and there's aluminium in the, in the sky. And the geoengineers in America have come out and they have said that they are spraying the sky. And still they deny it. They are spraying the skies with poison. And I don't care how unbelievable that is, that is a statement of fact. Brian also, Royal Navy. Also Royal Navy. Also probably, you had your head in the clouds, didn't you, Brian? <laughs> Same experience. We look in the sky now and we see something that we've never seen before. Political correctness. These are two of the worst I've seen. When I read this, the phrase singing from the same hymn sheet would offend Christians. I just couldn't believe it. I tracked down the individual that came out with that phrase in a council somewhere. It went all the way to the top of the council. And they got very nervous when I asked the question, I'd like to actually talk to the person who actually came up with this decision because I think they have got a mental problem. And the person on the other phone said, oh, I wouldn't say that. I said, have you read this article? This person has come out and said that they think if you say singing from the same hymn sheet will offend Christians, that is just a nonsense. And I then said, has she been on a common purpose course? And the phone went quiet. I thought, oh, we're onto something here, aren't we? And then it dawned on me. I said, have you been on a common purpose course? And she said, yes. I said, well, there's the problem then. The other one, you are a coconut. It is illegal now to say to somebody, you are a coconut. It's not a racist comment. It's actually referring to someone as a traitor. 
because it means that you are black on the outside and white on the inside. That's incredible. Tony Blair, you are a coconut. Gordon Brown, you are a coconut. And yes, Mr. Cameron, you too are a coconut. Evening all. Warwickshire police chiefs have been told not to use the terminology, or the police have been told not to use the expression, evening all. Because evening has been deemed by bosses as a subjective term, which does not necessarily mean the same across cultures and nationalities. Well, I'd like to meet the cultures and the nationalities who are having difficulty with me saying good evening or evening all. They are lunatics, aren't they? What's the bet they've been on a common purpose course? They're having their brains mess with them. And our good old favorite, the BBC, the Brussels Broadcasting Corporation, has decided it will no longer use BC and AD because there's some issue with the word Christ in there. I, I still can't get my head around how ridiculous the BBC makes itself. Spotted Dick. Tesco's, one of our biggest supermarkets, attempted to change the pudding Spotted Dick to a Blemished Richard. <laughs> what are these people on? I would like some Blemished Richard and custard. Flintshire County Council, they must have meetings about this, renamed the popular dish because canteen staff apparently got tired of the giggles and smutty comments made by diners. <laughs> well, my, my comment to the people at the Flintshire County Council is get a life and a sense of humor. Fairy tales are being messed with. Um, we've got Snow White and the Seven Dwarves because apparently the dwarf is not PC anymore. And of course, I'd like to remind them that the dwarves were the good guys. Rapunzel was considered too dark and Little Red Riding Hood was criticized because Little Red Riding Hood was on her own in the woods. I thought this was supposed to demonstrate to little children why you don't walk on your own in the woods. Titles, this is from the European Union. Mrs. and Miss have been abandoned, as have Madam and Mademoiselle, and Fro and Fraulein, and Signora and Signorita. Also, they've decided that names like Sportsman Statesmen, firemen, headmasters, headmistresses, laymen, and manageress and mayoress are to be banned because they're not gender neutral. You just could not make it up. I know that um, our friend Harmon's got a problem there, but uh, we move on. Anything with the word man in it is to be changed. So manhole now becomes maintenance hole. And man-made will now be artificial or synthetic. And holidays, of course, is another victim. The word Christmas or Easter, and actually yesterday on the television, um, old, um, I've forgotten. <laughs> the President of the United States of America, they are blank for you. Um, he announced that the troops will be home for the holidays. <laughs> it used to be home for Christmas, but now he's gonna be home for the holidays, okay? Obama, yes, allegedly, I apologize, yeah. The mind doesn't work all the time, right. Nitty gritty, of course, is a, a word that you're not allowed to use. I personally have been picked up for using the nitty gritty. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. You can't say that. Oh, yes, I can. And there's this one. 
there's far too many unanswered questions. How many people in this room think that 9-11 was an inside job? You are a very well-educated group. Yeah. I should ask how many people aren't sure yet. Okay, fair enough. On the back of the 9-11, we got the Patriot Act. This was, of course, an enabling act. This is the same as Hitler used to convert a democratic Germany into a dictatorship. More unanswered questions about 7-7. I'm not going to go into the details now. There's as much as you need on the internet to actually come to your own conclusions. The important thing about this episode was this was used by Tony Blair to get the Civil Contingencies Bill in place. The Civil Contingencies Bill is an enabling act. There's always something at the end of these events, and, and if nothing else, that leads me to be suspicious. And on and on and on, okay? So let's look at the overall result of all of the things I've just highlighted before. We get family breakdown, we get increasing vulgarity and baseness, we get oppressive government, we've got out of control youths, unemployed, uninspired and on welfare. We've got demoralized armed services, we've got military personnel dying on the basis of a lie, we've got no confidence in our institutions, we're paying higher taxes for poorer services. This is a list of things that you would do if you wanted to subvert a country. This is Marxism. Let's go through the list. The creation of racism offenses, tick. Continual change to create confusion, tick. The teaching of sex and homosexuality to children, tick. The undermining of schools and teachers' authority, tick. Huge immigration to destroy national identity, tick. The promotion of excessive drinking, tick twice. Emptying the churches, tick. An unreliable legal system with bias against the victim of crime, tick. Dependency on the state or state benefits, tick. Control and dumbing down of the media, tick. And encouraging the breakdown of families, tick. That is Marxism. If we don't see it, what do we see? And of course, you lot see it. We are governed by this crowd at the moment, the European Union. They have taken control of our lives without our permission. This is the future control, one world government, the United Nations. They're imposing the first dollop of their control, Agenda 21. If you're not familiar, then you'll be able to find out on the internet. There's enough there to keep you going for years. Codex Elementarius, more control, and carbon tax. Now, carbon tax is the one that will be probably here and effective before we realize it. The carbon tax is going to be imposed upon us, and it's going to be enforced. I believe that what's happening is the, one of the acts of parliament going through at the moment, the localism bill, has provision to collect taxes directly from us. So watch the localism bill. So for the past several decades, whether it's 20, 30, 50, 70, 100, it, it, it doesn't matter what we know, it's, it's been going on. The political establishment have shown enormous loyalty to their party whilst they've been betraying us. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a global agenda. This document, I've got it, it's a 50-page document here. Global Governments 
2025 at a critical junction. There's a document, you can actually get it from the internet. They are telling us how they're going to create a one world government and tell us how to run our lives. The United States National Intelligence Council and the European Union's Institute for Security Studies have joined forces to produce this assessment for the long-term prospects for global governance framework. The framework, what happens after the framework? They institute the actual product itself, don't they? Nothing to worry about? One world government? What's wrong with one world government? Peace, harmony, love. The clue is in the word one. It's a dictatorship. It's communism. Or as we probably prefer to identify it, it's corporate fascism. So what's our plan? We come back to the basics. Nobody on this planet has the right or the authority to tell anybody what to do without their consent. That is an uncontestable fact. We are governed by consent and we are policed by consent. We are withdrawing our consent. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in lawful rebellion.